Although we've done some great work converting our fixed width layout and text into relative units, our work isn't going to pay off for our mobile users until we add a viewport meta tag to the head of our HTML template. We need to let our browser know that we want the viewport size to be the viewport size of the device, not some other larger resolution that will render our flexible scaling implementation pretty much useless. In this lesson, we'll give our fluid layout a test drive in Chrome's mobile emulator. Now with a firm grasp of the problem, we'll work on solving it by first adding an HTML template file to our responsive robots theme, and then by adding a viewport meta tag to the head of our HTML template file. With this critical element in place, our flexible layout can now shine, and yep, new problems can readily be identified. Stick with me, our groundwork is in place, and now we're ready to see our first payoff with the addition of a viewport meta tag. Now we've already added some flexible and fluid elements to our website, but this is only really going to impact still the desktop viewing experience or a widescreen viewing experience. It's really not going to trickle down and positively affect the mobile viewing experience yet. And there's a few things that we need to add, remove, rearrange in order to make our design experience implementing responsive design more successful. So the first thing I want to do is inspect this page in Chrome. So I'm going to control click and select inspect element. I'm going to press this toggle emulation button, which is this little phone icon. Then in the very bottom pane, this, this lowest row here, I'm gonna drag this up so that I can see what's going on. And I'm going to select an Apple iPhone 5, and it shows me a resolution of 320 by 568. So I'm gonna click this middle button to switch that around to landscape mode. And as you can see, I have to pan around to actually be able to view the contents of this page. Even though we added all of these percentages to our columns and you know, you might expect that, well, this is only 568 pixels wide. How come things aren't resizing appropriately? We have everything in percentages, right? Well, it's because we're missing this critical element called a viewport meta tag. A viewport tag is going to determine the actual size of the canvas that we're looking at. And right now, this canvas size is a lot bigger than 568 pixels. It's really more like something like 980 pixels. So since this device thinks that the page is actually 980 pixels wide, it really is honoring all of the declarations that we made percentage based wise, but it's really not squishing any of our content into the viewport. And what we want ultimately is for our content to be viewable and accessible without any horizontal scrolling in any kind of device. So the first thing that we want to do is add this meta viewport tag to the head of our HTML pages. And for that, we're going to need an HTML template file. Let's head over to Finder. And if I look in my theme, which is in Sites All Themes Responsive Robots, I've got a page TPL, a node article TPL, a node TPL, a block TPL, but I don't have an HTML template file. Why this is important is because if I take a look at my page template file, I kind of get dropped into the middle of the HTML file. I don't have a starting HTML tag here and I don't have a head tag or any of that. So what I need is the HTML template file so that I have access to that markup that appears in the head section of the HTML document. So we can find this a default HTML template file in the Drupal core files. So I'm headed back to the root of my Drupal install. And if I navigate to modules and then system, you can see here that I've already expanded it, but I'm just going to go into system. Here is our HTML 
template file, html.tpl.php. I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to navigate back to my theme, which is in sites, all themes, responsive robots, and I'm going to paste that item into there. So now we have a default HTML template file. So I'm going to open that up in Sublime. And here's our doc type. Here's our HTML opening tag. Here's our head tag. And I'm just going to drop in this meta viewport tag just below the title tag. So what we have here is meta name equals viewport. The content equals initial scale equals 1.0. And this initial scale property, it's going to set the zoom level of the page to 1.0, which actually means 100%. And this helps us make the viewing experience consistent, regardless of which device you're looking at the page on. Next, we have the width. And we could set this to a static width of, for example, 320 pixels wide. But as you know, there are so many devices out there. Why would we want to pick an arbitrary number, just picking one maybe popular device and limiting ourselves to that device and perhaps causing the viewing experience to be kind of odd and not consistent if people using our page were looking at it on a device that was slightly different. So what we're gonna do is just put device hyphen width as our width value. And this will let the browser detect the device width and we don't have to actually know the device width. So I've dropped that into my HTML template file. I'm gonna save this page. And now since I've added a new template file to the system, I need to clear the Drupal cache. So I'm in terminal and I'm in my site. I'm gonna use Dresh and type in Dresh CC all. Now we've cleared our Drupal cache, our new template file should load. I'm gonna head back over to Chrome and I'm going to refresh the page by pressing Command and R to refresh the page. Now we have a smaller device width. We actually have the device width being set to this 568 and we still have horizontal scrolling happening because of our giant image right here, which is breaking our page, which is why we will we will devote some time to making our images responsive. Right now we have a static huge width set in our image styles, which is why this page is breaking. But notice the content columns. Now these content columns are respecting the percentages that we set up in our 960.css. So instead of static pixel based widths, we've got the percentages and it's doing a percent of this device width, which for this device is 568 pixels. So we've made some improvements here. That's the impact of adding that meta viewport tag. But we still have some odd things going on here. Our title tag and our slogan, our logo and navigation, they've all been taken out of the natural flow of the document using absolute and relative positioning. So we wanna put these elements back into the natural flow so that they will scoot around each other and honor each other's space. Right now there's no space honoring going on. Everything is just overlapping and being quite rude about it. So we want to rearrange some things. And so in the next lesson, we'll look at putting the navigation back into the natural flow, removing any absolute and relative positioning and any static height declaration so that our heading can be a little bit more responsive. And we'll do that in the next lesson.